eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. This is Liam Hendricks, and you're watching Crosstown Cross Talk on the Barroom Network. Some may find the following disturbing. Discretion is advised. Every summer in Chicago, the sunshine spotlights the city's spectacular skyline, its luxurious lakeshore, marvelous monuments, and the over 200 neighborhoods in the city. And it also brings to light two of the greatest sports franchises in the world. On the north side, it's the Cubs. On the south side, it's the White Sox. This is Crosstown Crosstalk. Hello and welcome to another very exciting edition of Crosstown Crosstalk presented by the Barroom Network. My name is Vinny Parisi and it is a special opening day edition of the show. I hope everybody is as excited for opening day as I am. I loathe the fact that I'm coming in here today believing my Chicago White Sox will win fewer than 60 games. It is the most disgusting feeling you could possibly imagine, but I have the excitement of opening day because I just love baseball. I have a whole show dedicated to the great game of baseball because of how much I love it. You know what else I love? I love talking ball with... People who know a thing or two, been around the block a time or two, maybe helped invent a Chicago sports radio station. Of course, I'm talking about my good friend, Mike North. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing great, Vinny. Good to talk to you, man. I it's like that hat. I like that hat. Oh, New thank Jersey you. Devils. Look out, baby. Yeah, for you're, sure. You're the only guy in the country that has a New Jersey Devils podcast, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Outside not? of New Jersey, yes. Oh, of course. Yes, yes, yeah. 100%. 100%. You're, no like you're like a miniature soprano. You're like a mini soprano. I'm, the, I'm literally just a walking Italian. You said before the show, <laughs> right. you were intimidated by me asking if you wanted to come on. I'm the only person that intimidates Mike North. Is that true? Well, no, I, I, I don't think anybody's ever really intimidated me, but they've scared me a hell of a lot. I will okay. tell you that. But Fair. I just want to say before we go on, being two Italian Americans, me being half, I'm a Medigan, yes. So I'm Irish and I'm Sicilian, yes. My Italian buddies used to say, You want to drink, you just don't want to pay. I understand. <laughs> and Vinny, you being of uh, Italian descent, uh, did you wear, are you a Napolitan or are you Sicilian? What are you? Sicilian, 75%. Okay. So my yeah. 75% Sicilian, the other part comes from Calabria, Northern Italy. Okay. And, and you know, I just want to say before we go on, find another street to name Obama. Okay. <laughs> Please, that Columbus Avenue. The guy discovered America. Obama just heard about Chicago 25 years ago when That's he was funny. in Hawaii. That's funny. I mean, j- j- leave it alone. Give him Larrabee. I'll give Obama Larrabee. But please, the Italians were getting kicked around. Enough. Is, is that okay? not the most Mike North intro to a baseball show you've ever heard? I just got to tell you. I mean, when I go by the new White Sox Stadium in Nashville and I'm, I'm on I-57. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> did, did you come on here to to get the gears going or did you come on here to talk some baseball? What are you I'm doing? I'm talking I'm, baseball, baby. No, I'm What's kidding. Going? I'm kidding. That's I mean, right. you talk, you bring up Nashville. You bring up, I mean, you're basically alluding to how much of a joke the White Sox are. Mike, I'm conceding to you, Mike. I know you've been waiting for this moment for a long time. We've been arguing on Twitter for a long time about it. They they're just they're a bad franchise, and well, there's you know no what? reason not to believe it. I believe we're in the day and age where I was in when I was doing radio at, at peak level, okay, which was basically last week. I've been blessed, but I got to tell you something. Since the '90s, I never saw, especially with the advent of podcasts, where you have fan bases now who are filled with people that think they know the game completely. And there's a thing called experience. And when you have a lot of younger people calling older people boomers, which, by the way, I'm getting a jacket that says boomer. You know, I'll send the youngsters a millennial. That sounds like a flower to me, a millennial jacket. Okay. All I'm telling people is this. 
Eldo said, Eldo Gandia, the great uh, pod father of, of the bar room, when we were discussing the bear situation, said last week, well, you know, we're diverse. No, no, basically, I watched the Rifleman yesterday. There's 12 guys on horseback, which is the rest of the bar room people, and then me. Okay, and they got the rope, and they're ready to... Uh, what I don't care what subject it is. I told everybody four years ago, not just you, Benny. I told the Sun-Times people. I told the Tribune people. I told the bar room people. I told everybody, you're banking on this team winning 100 games. Okay. And, you, and I never saw it. I never saw it, and I thought the Chris Sale trade, still, I don't care if he's, his arm's hanging, is one of the worst trades in the history of this town. It absolutely we is. Know, we didn't get a live body back. And that, that, you didn't even get a ball player back for him that is actually a major league ball player. And I just had a problem with that. They've made every wrong move you can make. They're still going back to the 90s playbook when you were going to move to Nashville. I can put together a group in two weeks. And if he wants to sell the team to me, I'll be the 9% owner. I'll put the group together and I can get the money. Well, we're going to start the petition for that. And I could get the money. So I don't want to hear you're going to Nashville. If you want to go to Nashville, move the team there, and then we're going to get a new franchise. Because that was the absolute wrong move to make a couple weeks before uh, before uh, we kick off. But you know what? Chris Getz has got a heavy-duty schedule ahead of him. He's got to try to rebuild a ball club that was sold on everybody, that it was going to be one of the all-time great White Sox ball clubs. Kenny Williams. His swan song was being probably the most inept general manager in baseball and not forecasting, along with the other loser, Rick Hahn, how bad this was going to be because they thought they were the 27 Yankees and the White Sox peddled it that way. But my, my thing with this whole thing, yeah. in 2020, they went 35 and 25. And then in 2021, they went 93 and 60 as it was it 93 and 64, whatever yeah. it is, something like yeah. that. That's two years of being on pace for mid nineties. I know the COVID short season, sure. the, it was sure. on pace for 95 seasons. Sure. It's hard to call two back to back years like that, a flash in the pan, but I, that turned out to be what it was. So w like, where did it go wrong then? Cause the Chris sale trade sucks. There's no doubt, but there's no like doubting that there were moves that were solid that led to this 2020, 2021 back to back playoff year. You know, it sounds stupid when I bring it up, Benny, but I was, and I was doing the show with Aldo at the time. And uh, at the time we were doing the show, it was announced while we were doing the show that they picked up that catcher, Yasmani Grandel, and I was stunned. I, I knew that he had already had two other opportunities to be the number one catcher, okay? And he basically failed, L.A., Milwaukee. So I'm saying, why are you going after uh, this guy? He's bad defensively. He's not that good a hitter. Uh, if you you need a guy like McCann, who was a two-time All-Star. And at the time, I had talked to Jerry Reinsdorf about it. They didn't believe in McCann. They believed more in Grandel. That's baseball judgment. You didn't believe in a two-time All-Star, but you were going with this guy going on his third or fourth team. So it's just decision-making from the same people that have been making the same decisions. And I knew that wasn't from Jerry when I talked to him. I said, how do you get rid of this guy? You can get him for half the money. He'll hit you 250. He'll, he'll stop everything. The pitching staff still misses him because the pitching staff did not like Grandel. So I knew from that point on, things were starting to unravel a little bit because you do your job for a team you expect to be rewarded and they just ship them off. So, you know, it's just things like that, that you look at, you look at uh, the T Tim Anderson, how they coddled them. You look at how Moncada was allowed to trot to first base. They were an embarrassment. And now I hear AJ Pruszynski's getting inside information. Somebody's leaking out what happened with this club the last two years and some uh, some shenanigans and stuff that's going to be leaking out. So there's some enemies that don't like the White Sox as they are now. And I even heard a couple media people say that, and, and one of them was a strong Reinsdorf ally, say, I've lost all respect for the guy. I mean, and this guy was strong. So they have a lot of internal problems. They have stuff leaking out. 
I used to think families like the Wurtzes and the McCaskies and the Reinsdorfs, it was good for sports to have family-run places. I'm starting to turn the other way. Corporate's much, much better now, it seems like, because uh, these, these people are all outdated. They, hate, they, they don't want to fire their friends. They, they run it more like a business than a baseball team. They take nothing like they take everything personal. So I think the White Sox, and then you look at their roster, and we're finally getting to them. And you don't even know who 20 of the 25 players are. I looked at them today. I thought it was Notre Dame College Prep. Okay. And uh, Paul DeJong and something like, I mean, come on. You know, just, and then when they move, threaten to move, Benny, they say they won't be able to compete if they don't move. What free agents have they ever gone after that were worth a damn? Did they go after Harper? No. Did they go after a Garrett Cole? No. They don't go after anybody. So that's a bunch of BS. They're just trying to build that stadium somewhere. So then when they do sell it, after Jerry passes on down the line, then they can get more money, period. It's always seems to be what it's about. I mean, every time there's like a big free agent, there are these like rumors that come out that oh. they're they're at the table, right? They invited Harper in. There was the picture of him at the United Center. Same thing. Their hand was in the Manny Machado cookie jar, and it just it never turns out to be no. anything. I mean, is it is it Albert Bell? The last time they brought in like a high end free agent like that. I mean, Grand Dahl at the time was considered a high end catcher. But like you said, it unraveled. I, I've heard some things that are going to I come never out heard him. in my world. I I looked at that seventy-seven million dollar signing, and I, I don't know what where you heard he was high end. Not I heard he was a good framer. That was the best they could say about the guy. Good framer. I mean, he had a lot of home runs. Did. Yeah, I mean, and he could hit some homers, but he he wasn't a clutch player. He was lost from day one. Uh, the pitching staff lost confidence in him. They liked the prior guy like I had called on the bar three years ago. So Tim Anderson, just a catastrophe. What happened to him off the field affected him on the field. Um, it's not my job to find out what shenanigans he was up to. And then you got Moncada, who basically cares more about what color spikes he wears than actually turning into a top flight major leaguer. You have to got, and then they hire a manager that the Royals didn't even interview, and he was with them. So it's just a puff, puff organization. I mean, the big the big announcement isn't the roster. I mean, I grew up in Chicago. I never asked for a shake with a wafer in it and marshmallows and chocolate bits. I never asked for that. I don't know what they good. think they're doing. If they think they're in, if they think they're moving to uh, uh, Nashville and they're testing things out early. Hey, Dad, I, what do you want, son? A strawberry chocolate? No, I want a shake, Dad, with some socks on it with wafers and marshmallows. That, get, that gets in the way. Let's go. We're Chicago. It's campfire s'mores, Mike. It doesn't look oh good Oh, my God. Come on. It's, it's just the whole thing's hilarious. It's going to be delicious. You can only yeah. get in the stadium club. That's Jimmy, the biggest I, thing I, that they hide, too. You're still in the embryo stage of being a Sox fan. You're all excited. Yeah. I'm excited, too. I want them to win. But when you see the total 60, there's not, you know, you know, there's not much hope. And, you know, the whole mistake they made, they brought over guys from all over the world that didn't have to, that didn't have the proper, I mean, they brought over three, four Cuban players, and they didn't have a Cuban coach. I mean, these guys get homesick. They're young kids. You had mostly a coaching staff that couldn't speak Spanish. You had Tony and somebody else, you know, just unbelievable. And they paid people too early. I mean, really, by all measures, Mankata should be gone. We they should chose, be starting off. They, they should be him gone. Over Jake Berger, who's in the Miami Marlins organization now. I'm sure you like Jake Berger. I loved him. He was a 16-inch looking softball player <laughs> who's baby Schwarber. Yeah. And to get rid of him for a 27-year-old journeyman pitcher, that's Kenny Williams in a nutshell. And after they made that deal, he was let go finally. Yep. Yep. So. I mean, Mike, the White Sox won the World Series when I was 11 years old. And yeah. then from that point on, it just, it slowly started to decline. And it's the least just, you, the least they yeah. won one when you were 11. 
Yeah. I mean, when I was 11, uh, the White Sox used to always finish second to the Yankees. But, I mean, there was no playoffs. If there would have been playoffs, they would have been in the playoffs almost every year. Yeah. Yep. The playoffs when, now, yeah. It would have been like, division. I mean, you had eight teams. You had yeah. to finish first. So and you just in the World Series, right? Right. You got yeah. right into the World Series. I mean, in the 60s, it was the Yankees and the White Sox. Late 50s, early 60s. We would have had at least one. World Series win or something like that. We got in in 59. We lose to the Dodgers, you know. So um, I just can't believe the spot we're in after being promised so much and have to. And I was bringing up the podcasters. I love all the podcasters. But here's what I tell all the podcasters. You don't last a long time if you're not right once in a while. Sure. So I see everybody being a little more cautious this year yeah. and other things. This has been the most miserable five years in sports for me that I've ever covered. We yeah, had a across, across the board in all the sports? All across oh, the yeah. board. Oh, the yeah. Justin Fields fiasco is a joke. No I, knew that. I knew that from the beginning. They got rid of a winning quarterback, brought this guy in. They got rid of him. And now he's over in Pittsburgh doing what I wanted the Spares to do. We have Russell Wilson and then somebody behind him. And then you got the White Sox with the four years. You got the Blackhawks. They're sued. They're being sued again for the 2010 scandal. That's still hanging over their head. They got one player that you've heard of that's going to be a superstar if he doesn't get killed. The Cubs did have been the one team. Ricketts yep. has been the one guy that doesn't beg for money, buys the whole neighborhood, you know, says, I'm going to do this on my own for the most part. Maybe he'll ask for something down the line, but he makes the South Side look bad because he's been the one light. The Cubs have been the one light that's been shining. And the Bulls are a disaster. So, I mean, this last five years, I think it's been the, the people that were in denial about all these things. Oh, the White Sox are going to be great. Fields is going to the Hall of Fame. The Cubs are winning a World Series. The Blackhawks scandal's over. We got new blood. Give me a break. There's still a lot hanging over all these franchises. There really is. And we're going to move on over to the Cubs, Mike. You talk okay. a little highly of them. Um, they go out this summer and they do. I, I still, I'll never get that video of you walking your dog. You had a bag oh. of poop in your hand. You had a yes. bag of poop in your hand. You were holding the White Sox while you yep. were talking about the Cubs. Yes. Um, they talk about Cody Bellinger. You need to keep him. He, even if, even if he tapers off just a tad, he's still like a really good MLB player has been for a long time. He's won an MVP. He's won a world series. You got other guys in the Cubs locker room who have been there, done that like Dansby. They bring in Cody. They beat. Scott Boris at his own game, and they yep. get him at a fair price. Um, what are you looking at from Bellinger and the Cubs going in opening day? Well, the over-under is 84 and a half for them. You know, the White Sox is 60. Okay, 61, maybe in some areas 61. 84 and a half. They won more games last year. Yeah, I would take the over. But I'm looking at, you would take the over. Here's the problem. Bellinger is the one superstar in that team. Other teams have a more than one. Mm -hmm. If he has any kind of off year at all, Who's got to pick up the slack? Now, that video I did was when they wanted to get rid of Happ and Contreras. I said, you can't build a team by constant. Look at the White Sox, getting rid of guys, getting rid of guys, you know, getting rid of the sales of the world, getting rid of ball players to try to project down the line. You can't do it. You got to you gotta keep some of these guys. So they kept Happ. They got rid of Contreras. Okay. Their catcher last year did a great job. Gomes, he did a great job. He filled in for Contreras. So they made a good move. Okay. Then they signed Bellinger. Now they signed this Japanese pitcher. I've been watching him in the spring. Unbelievable. So I was worried about them getting trying to fill in Strowman's part because if you remember, Strowman got off to a great uh, start last year. I got who's going to pick that slack up. Now the second half they figured him out, you know. So he had to keep moving. Now he's one of those guys you'll see on by the time he's done four other teams. You know yeah. what I mean? They figure him out after a couple of years. Sort of like Dylan Cease. I don't think Dylan Cease is going to end up someday just pitching for San Diego. He'll be moving on. He's that type of pitcher. Rubbery arm, can go every start, can last for a little bit longer. That being said, the Cardinals, I think, from what I'm looking at, are going to give them a challenge. I don't think Milwaukee is. Cincinnati, I'm hearing some yelling about them. I don't like it. The surprise team that I got in that division, they won less game. The, the over under 76. And I've been hearing and reading about we're not afraid of this division. We feel we can uh, the pirates. 
seem to be a team that's been collecting sort of like Tampa Bay has over the years, starting to figure out. I mean, they've had enough bad years where they've loaded up a little bit and they've gotten it wrong before. Uh, but the Pirates seem to be a team that could surprise. But that Cub division is up for grabs by everybody. Council's got more pressure on them at $8 million bucks a year than any of the players. Any of the players. Agreed. And if they get off to a bad start, I know what I'm going to be doing because I didn't like the move to begin with. I don't know what Dave Ross did, but whatever he did, whether somebody leaks something out, he's not preparing, or he's not all of a sudden for Hoyer to fly to his house unannounced and say you're fired. Well, anybody does that to me, they're they're thrown out of the house after they fire me. You know, he came over bearing a gift and saying you're fired. Well, wait a minute. What did I do wrong? I kept this team in the race, for God's sake, until September. And then the right fielder missed the fly ball. Suzuki, the pop fly. Yep. Suzuki missed the fly ball. Otherwise, they probably go. And then I don't think they get rid of – you can't get rid of Ross then. No, it would be hard so, to move on. It would be hard if they make it. Only yep. this town would do that. We get quarterbacks that win, we get rid of them. We get managers that we get rid of them. We got guys like Chris Sale, we get rid of them. Michael Jordan, let's go to the Wizards. What Jeremy was Lovey, Ronick, what Jeremy, was Ronick, Smith? Ten and Jeremy Ronick and Joy Boston. I don't know where yeah. he went after he was with the Hawks. Uh, Chelios Philly. go to Detroit. Yeah, Chelios go to Detroit. Yep. I mean, every damn star ends up leaving, except Ernie. <laughs> and, Mike, and Mike North. And yeah, Mike well, North never left. You well, know, they've tried. But see. Yeah, they've tried so many times. And I just You're not going to go do Detroit radio? No Detroit radio for you? Oh, my God. That's another bad look. I mean, I wasn't a, a, a Detroit uh, broadcaster. Now. Oh, was the Sox broadcaster. Well, I thought that's what you were leading me into. Uh, I mean, yeah, that we, was could, genius. we could go there. That was like, what? Well, yeah, well, the, the problem is I know the people that are involved. How you doing, Foster? I know the people that are involved, the Brooks Boyers and the Jason Benettis. And, you know, you got some egos. You had an ego there. And uh, Benetti, here's what I will say. I didn't like him. But if you said you didn't like Jay, he's the greatest ever. He's unbelievable. No, he's not. Jack Brickhouse, Harry Carey, you know, like Jack Quinlan. I can name them all day long, like Lionel Richie. He was okay. They told him to stop eating on the air. And if you ever saw Jason Benetti eat on the air a burger, with the glasses fogging up, and uh, it wasn't pretty. I saw it one day. I go, why is he eating like that? They had the camera right up on him, and you could see the food. I'm going, why are they, why are they doing that? Well, I guess that became an issue where they got in an argument because he'd go, hey, look what I got—a burger from Fat Burger or something. Arr! And they were, whoa, you know. And I guess that became an issue and other things. So that's gone, and uh, you got a new announcer who. Said he's going to catch up on White Sox baseball. He's yeah. going to read up on it. Yeah, the guy had a turtleneck, and he's from from Dartmouth. So yeah. I think we'll he was on Nesson at points too. Yeah, in the Red Sox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. going to catch up on White Sox baseball. So there's going to be a learning experience for a major league announcer. It's it, the whole thing. It's just insane. It is. Steve Stone will help him. But so, do you think I uh, certainly will for all you Cup fans <laughs> out there? And let me tell you something. I once got into an altercation with Kent Merker back in 1992 with the with the Cubs. It's better than Hawk talking about his buddyship with Ted Williams, though. No, <laughs> brought up Ted Williams every broadcast. I want to. I, 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 I bet if you ask Ted I Williams, who was hot and John and Morrison <laughs> out there in the Bolingbrook Bolingbrook Golf Course. That's funny. And also, uh, well, there's a ball inside. I love Hawk. There's a ball inside. You know, Yaz used to get away from the pitches by knowing it was coming beforehand. Yep, you know, yep. I Hawk loved Hawk. I loved Hawk too, Hawk but was I was more entertained. I don't know. He was entertaining for sure, especially to if you like the White Sox. But I, I am not convinced that if you asked Ted Williams or Yastrzemski who Hawk Harrelson was, they would have known. Though he makes it sound like Hawk was he huge. makes it sound like they're best friends. Benny, uh, yeah. Hawk was a was was how would you say a pop? Icon in 67, they would both know him. Okay. And Hawk could play, Vinny. Oh, I Hawk know he could play. I've looked up his statistics. He broke before. his leg. I saw him play numerous times. 
but he had the Nehru jacket on. He was, uh, you know, he tail tooled around in a dune buggy. He had the long locks. I mean, he was a showman. He's the guy that invented, uh, wore the first batting glove. I mean, so, yeah, they know who he is, but, I mean, I was talking to, I was talking to John and Pesky once, and Pesky told me I didn't know nothing about that Pesky pole. Anyway, two and two. That's funny. That's funny. I love Hawk. Oh, who doesn't love Hawk? Hi, Hawk. A lot of diehard Cup fans hate him, which. Yeah. But they hated Harry till he came over there, so. Yeah. I heard Harry today. It was great. Mark, he had him on 8 o'clock. Girardi's first game catching, and it's Sutcliffe on the mound. And Harry goes, ah, later on this year, we'll be heading on over to Comiskey Field. Hey! Comiskey Field, he called it. God bless, I missed that, yeah, man. Yeah, that's awesome. That's one thing Marquis does well, I think, is they play oh, yeah. those old games. They play those old games that mean something, you know. Girardi's yeah. first game. Like, who would have even thought that they wanted to watch that until it's I watched on the about TV two innings of it, it. Maybe because it's opening day, you know, Vince? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, Can I just say one thing about the bar room? Yeah. Great, great group of people. Mm -hmm. Every one of you guys. Of all you guys who've been sticking with Eldo for all these years and all you guys together and Eldo's given a lot. The bar room, and I saw, I've always often told that Eldo's first picture on on Twitter, um, he looked like the guy that shot Tony Montana's head off from behind with the glasses. You remember? First of all, if you're going to use a rifle, do you have to press the muzzle right next to his head? Maybe stand back a little bit. Give the guy a run. He a half a chance. But, yeah, it's been a great, great time. The bar room's awesome. Cover all the sports, folks. Make sure you subscribe. We're on all the platforms. Absolutely. You can catch yeah. yesterday's episode of Bar Down when we go over the NHL. That was very fun. Love that. How Mike, are those no. Sabres doing, Vinny? The Sabres? They still. How's Gil Perot doing? Is he yeah. still rolling out there? No, no. no he's, he's gone. Not. Okay. He's gone. How's he's Derek gone. Sanderson doing for the Bruins? Derek Sanderson's oh. drunk somewhere in Letterkenny, Canada right now. With white skates. He wore yep. white skates, yep. man. And he's telling someone at the local bar about how Bobby Orr was his best friend, kind of like Hawk does with Ted Williams. Well, you know what? <laughs> I have a game that I want to play. I want to find Rex Grossman somewhere. Oh, yeah? And I want to say, hey, Rex, I heard he's putting on a little bit of wage. I hear he does, you know, he's 5'10". He, I was at an auction. I did an auction the uh, eighteen hours I did on the year, four years. He, I said, you want to? He goes, I'll donate a pair of my football pants. I go, okay. So he comes in. Now you forget that football can't stop, okay? But he brought them in. They were like this big. I go, yeah. these? He goes, these are mine. He was like five ten. Now you walk into a bar somewhere, and he sits down there at the bar, and he goes, and he starts talking. Or somebody starts talking about the Super Bowl and he says he's a Super Bowl quarterback, nobody would believe it. Nobody. Would anybody believe Rex Grossman now was a Super Bowl quarterback? No, but that's what he did. You know? So if they God didn't bless. know, if they didn't know, you were you were a Rex fan, Mike? No. Oh. But I liked Rex. He was a good guy. Oh, of course. I was a of the bad quarterbacks, I learned I was well, what I would do, I was a Cade McNown fan. So I got burnt on that. I said, never again will I get burned by a new guy. Not like th this group, you know, uh, Justin Fields, Caleb Williams, you know, no, who's next? You know, they like new toys. All right, get rid of that guy. Let's get a new guy. I don't make that mistake. If I think a guy can't play, like I think Caleb Williams, it shouldn't be drafted number one, I'll say it. If I think a ball player can't play, I'll say it. And I don't care what the ramifications are. I think I see the White Sox and the Cubs. I see the Cubs with the chance to win the pen. The White Sox could be the worst team in baseball. Only Oakland and Colorado have worse records. I, I honest, I absolutely think the White Sox are amongst the worst. They're a tough it, it, it wouldn't shock me if they're well, dead see, Cleveland, today I watched the show. Aldo goes, do you ever prepare? <laughs> do you ever prepare? I go, all the time. I was watching the show today. Five members of a panel. Every member took a different team in the Central. Guess what team wasn't taken? The White Sox. The White Sox. Someone took That's the Royals? The only team. Cleveland. Detroit. Minnesota. Minnesota's an 86 and a half right now. Um, I like Cleveland. The oh, over so 80, 81 and a half. They beefed up. If they're pitching, the problem with 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 the problem with Cleveland is if they're out of it in July, 
you should see this guy. <laughs> if they're out of it in July, they might get rid of Shane Bieber. They might want to trade some of these guys. Yeah. So you got to hope they're in the race if you take the over 81. I think they can. They got new leadership over there. Uh, the name should still be Indians. It shouldn't be Guardians. Um, but other than that, uh, you know what? It's a wide open division. Torkelson on Detroit. His hobby buy is going to come. I mean, you want to talk about a waste of money? The last two years have been a, a complete, utter disaster. In fact, if you look at those Cub, Cub players, you want to talk about one hit wonders? Rizzo, Bryant, Javi. Uh, who had who predicted this? Nobody. Rizzo's I been spoke, okay. He's been all right. He plays with the short porch. He's on yeah. the Yankees. Uh, you got, but he's been okay. Bryant he made a boneheaded decision. Why, like, and I've heard that he's very upset with Colorado and the people that be up at the top over there because they they overhyped. You're gonna love this. They've overhyped the prospects and the the young players that are in the organization, and they don't. The guy didn't hit a home run for half a season in yeah, Colorado. That, that's I not the a home run in Colorado. Yeah. I can get up with a wiffle ball bat. You can. I mean, I, my God. I, I mean, could. he he's been he's been an utter disaster for what he was predicted to be. I saw Schmidt. I saw all the greats. I went to my first opener in '64. Talking about openers, my uncle said, "You want to wait here." The players walk over the concourse. I go, what are you talking about, Uncle Joe? He goes, come here. He goes, wait. We'll, after the game, we ran. Now watch. And there was, they 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 used to, it was gated. And you'd see Bill Verdon, Will, Roberto Clemente, Don Hoke, Dick Grote. And then I'd wait for the players after. I shook hands with Hank Aaron when I was a kid. And, awesome. and Ron Santo. And then I. So, so opening day is always special, but, but, and I think the White Sox are going to be forgotten by July and the Cubs are going to give a push. I think that's another division. Both divisions, central divisions are divisions where more than one team's picked to win St. Louis, the Cubs. I mean, Milwaukee lost Corbin Burns. I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, I, I don't like the Brewers this year. I know. I don't that, either. I, their right. over-under is low. They lost their manager, and they lost Corbin Burns. Here's the puzzlement. The Baltimore Orioles, they didn't sneak, They snuck up on everybody last year. People said, oh, they're going to be better. They got the good catcher and everything else. But they won 100 games. They pick up Corbin Burns. This, this show's really good today. I, I really got something going today. I can feel the rhythm going. But they got Corbin Burns from Milwaukee, and their over-under is only 90 after winning 100 games last year. So injuries could come into play. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, nobody knows. I, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't, There's always going to be a surprise or two team also. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there'll be the White Sox. But if the White Sox, how about if the White Sox, if, if some of these guys like Eloy, I mean, that guy can't run the first without pulling a muscle, you know? I mean, we, there used to be a game called Donkey Baseball. They, you, know, you jump on after you hit the ball. They should have a donkey waiting for him to jump on so he can run the first base because he gets hurt a lot. But if they could stay healthy, who knows? I, I when I look at their lineup, I'm like, if all these guys, if they, if they, if Ben Attendee has a better year than he did last year, another bad signing. If if Moncada figures out a way to play 140 games and he doesn't completely dog it the whole time. If Eloy hits 30 home runs, Robert hits another 30 home runs, like he had 38 last year. That could be a lineup. You know how good Robert is. Robert is so good, you don't even talk about him. In other words, you just take him and you put yep. him out there. Now, Moncada is yep. lazy. Yep. Moncada wants to be a, a, a singer. Moncada likes to set himself apart from the rest of the team. I hate guys. We had this in, in, in high school when I coached high school. There was always that one kid that wanted that was pretty good. Every so often, you'd get a kid. I was there for six years. We had this twice. I want to wear a different kind of sneaker. I want to wear a different. I can't stand it. You're you're on a team. Everybody, the colors of that team. You're wearing gold. You're wearing green. You're wearing this and that. You you want to be noticed. And then what do you do? You crap the bed. I can't believe we traded Chris Sale for this guy. 
I yeah. knew he was going to be a bum because the Red Sox don't give people away. Now they do, but before they didn't. Yeah. They kept yeah. Ben Attendee. Yeah. They was kept Dave other guys. Yep. And they kept their shortstop at Bogarts at the time. Yep. And they, they, so they gave us and they told us, oh, we hate to let him go. And we got fleeced. Period. End of story. Rick Hahn wanted Devers and the Red Sox were like, no. You but take Moncada. They you wanted take to, The White Sox will go after a guy that they wanted for 10 more years. Yep. They'll get him in his 13th year when yep. he can't run. Yep. Yep. De Devers will be a White Sox in his mid 30s, no doubt. Great but, console, pounded sports. Great console, manager of the year, plus 400. That's a good, that's a pretty good price. That's, yeah. but that's Chicago, folks. Every year the Cubs are favored to do something. I think, I think Dave Ross would have been probably 550. Something in I that think range. The Cubs would still be favored. Yeah. Console has the name, but what's he ever won? What's he ever won? Nothing. Got to the NLCS one time. Yeah. 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 I Which mean, is, you I, know, I for that Brewers me. team, it's okay. See, that Brewers team, you had Yelich, you had Kane in center. Yep. Kane was a you good got player. Some ball, you had Bur you had a hell of a you had Hader closing. Mm -hmm. Yep. You had a lead, and it was like in the eighth inning. You were you were in. You were gold. Then they got rid of him. They sent him to San Diego. I'm going, wow. You know, when Milwaukee used to keep their guys, you know, I'm, uh, Yelich is still there, but, you know, he's damaged good sometimes. Yeah. You know, and I keep hearing Cincinnati, they got to show me. They got to show me. I love Bellinger. If they didn't sign Bellinger, did you see the excitement the day they signed Bellinger from the other players? Yeah. It's like a softball team or a bowling team. You know, you find out you were – you were right there last year in the bowling league. Okay? You're coming up, and then your anchor man leaves for another team. The rest of the team, you know, that's Bellinger if you were to left the Cubs. That's what I saw from the other players. Oh, my God, thank God he's back. You know, we were hoping he'd come back. He's the, un he's the un bona fide leader. Boros was bad for him in a way because they finally figured it out. If Boros is going to be a blockade to us and try to make and, and take advantage of us with salaries. Let's all get together and stop him. And that's why they did. Snell wasn't signed yet. A, 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 a few of his clients besides Bellinger were not signed. 100%. And they, yeah. they didn't do what like the White Sox would have done. Huh, they, walk they, away? Peter, well, they have Peter Crow Armstrong, this awesome prospect center fielder. Bye -bye. The White Sox would have been like, see you later, Bellinger. We're moving on to Peter Crow Armstrong, even though he didn't have a hit in a month to end the season last year. You know, it, sometimes it, am I saying Peter Crow Armstrong is going to be a bum in the MLB? He can't hit. No, I'm not. He plays real good defense. I, he I'm plays not sure great he defense. Either. He can't hit. He says, but no. to get rid of Bellinger in favor of him would have been a major well, mistake. I'll give you a perfect did. example. We got rid of Aaron Rowan. Remember mm -hmm. the White Sox? Who was yep. the blonde-haired kid that came in after him? Brian Anderson. Oh, my God. Yep. Oh, my God. The White Sox are so good at hyping their stars. They'll do the minor league reports. You'll see Gavin Sheets. Oh, Gavin Sheets hit a home run tonight. They won't tell you at the time he was hitting 240, you know, or whatever. You'll see Moncada when he was with the, with the White Sox minor league team and all these other guys. But absolutely, you're right about that. I mean, they, they hype. They hyped this Brian Anderson. I'll never forget it. Yep. I thought he was Mantle by the time he got up. by the He looked like Mantle. The only thing they didn't give him is number seven. Clean. Brian Anderson. I think he's still in the organization because whoever bombs with the White Sox, like Kenny Williams, you know, or Brian Anderson. Chris Getz. <laughs> yeah, Chris Getz. Uh, who's the kid, the other kid uh, that's the announcer? Oh, Beckham, second. Gordon Beckham. Gordon, anybody that, uh, Darren Jackson, yes. Ed Farmer, anybody that absolutely sucks, anybody that sucked with the White Sox gets a better job and sucks at that. That's what they do. Okay, so Brian Anderson. Okay. I watch this guy. I kill. He can't hit. But they push people out, like you said. They knew the Cubs know Armstrong can't hit, and Hoyer don't play. No, Hoyer don't play. Right, he's oh, seen I it all my... as an executive in the MLB. Yeah. I mean, I have my around. hair dyed blue. That's interesting. Enjoy finding hair dye down in Iowa. You know, I mean, come on. You don't <laughs> play. Least, the Cubs are a solid colors. organization. They're at least solid. Team but... Colors. 
Oh, every my, my kata would have dyed his hair green. <laughs> Mankata walks up. He's got more armor on him for a guy that strikes out than anybody. He's got more armor than Bonds used to have on him. Yeah, you know, and Bonds didn't need any. They were afraid to t- to throw at him because he'd come out and beat the crap out of you. Yeah, you know, in a roid rage. But I mean, come on. That's now wait a minute, right? Hap. Here's what Hap's got to do. Pounded sports. Console puts him at leadoff. Exactly right. But I think half is too wound. I think, you know, you get pulled. He he has that tightness. You know, he bats like this. You know, he you watch Otani. Well, you watch Ot- yeah. <laughs> and, and there's just fluidness. You know, I think he's got to get a little more fluid, but I think being a leadoff man is smart. I saw Console. The other day in the spring training game, about two weeks ago, have the lineup card up, and they showed him, expecting him to turn around. He looked at that lineup card for two minutes, right? Never turned around. I think I've never seen a Cub manager look at a lineup card, to be honest with you, longer than five seconds. And 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 this guy is supposed to be a wizard, so we'll find out what that eight million was all about, because that's more money than we're putting onto the players. A lot of the players, uh, Mike. I like to have it too. I don't know. I, I I thought at two in the lineup. I don't Horner, think too. Horner, I think Horner leading off, right? Like, I, don't I don't think. Know. Yeah, I don't think Cap's got the overall speed to be uh, a one. Uh, um, but you only lead off once. Yeah, you know sometimes you pad. That's you lead, true. You bat third. Another inning, you might come up. It's a fourth hitter with man on third. So I'm okay with it. So you do you buy like these people who kind of look beyond that, like when they create these lineups and they're like, okay, the number one spot in the lineup actually comes back up to bat third in an inning, you know, 15% of the time. Do you buy like, no, no, I don't buy that. that. When I played ball, I let off. So I knew that the only time I was probably going to lead off was the first inning. Okay. That's it. Yeah. And I, there's times, and I I know this, I'll be straight up. There were times I came up, I wasn't as good with men on bases. Some other guys that were down in the order more, but you just, they can't project. They don't know when eight guys are going to get on base in one inning. Mm -hmm. They don't know how their lineup's going to be turned. The thing I always did, whether it's a hardball or, or softball, well, softball for sure. I could hit in softball because you don't miss the ball, but I always got wood and I had speed. And that's what, you know, Louis Aparicio, the Ozzy Smiths of the day. It was all based before of steroids, like air rod and all of, 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 of you had to get on with speed and steel, Lou Brock's, the, the guys like that, but, and get wood on the ball. You have leadoff hitters now striking out over a hundred times. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, it's basically, I mean, Ricky Henderson's the best I ever saw. I mean, he could come, come off cold off the bench and hit a home run in the first inning. Yeah. You know, he took batting practice an hour ago, you know, he was mm-hmm. in the playing cards, playing talk, and then he comes up and it's a home run. Yeah, Ricky Henderson was a good player. No, oh no. my God, then he'd steal you hundred bases. My yep. God. Yep. Do you like Acuna, Mike? And I Atlanta? love him. Yeah, I love him. One of the best players in the league, in my opinion. Love him. Um, yeah, I to me, um, I think I'd rather. And I'm saying this before this nonsense with Otani. Yeah, sure. I said this last year on the bottom. I'd rather have Acuna. I said it on ESPN one thousand. Plug, plug with my good guy at Carmen DeFalco. Beyond Not a big mile. deal. Love Carmen. Yeah. And and I I said last year I'd rather have Acuna than Otani. Well, and this was before the surgery. I don't think it's crazy. It's not crazy. Because no. well, is Otani going to pitch forever? Yeah. No, Otani's not even going to pitch for two years. And who knows? He might be at Lovingworth. I mean, yeah. I have no idea what's going on. I, you know, like Pete Rose says, I wish I would have had an interpreter, you know? Uh, then we wouldn't have these issues. The nonsense, look, I've been dealing with some of the worst people and some of the best people. There's every kind of bookie. I know some of the top boys. They're the nicest guys in the world. But you, if you owe them money, you you got a problem yeah. back in the day. Mm-hmm. Now, things have changed a little bit. There's more intimidation now, maybe. Where's my money? We'll be back tomorrow. I mean, this and that. And there's people that go through these apps. Now, when I did the NFL handicap show in 1989, I thought gambling was around the corner. And I said, someday there'll be sports books in every state. And I was the first guy to have a gambling show in Chicago in 1989. 
Don't be gambling here. Just around the corner. I didn't know to take those 2020s. And I never, though, and this is the problem, I never envisioned prop bets. There's a guy named DeJounte um, Jordan Porter. DeJounte Porter, his brother, Michael Porter, plays for Denver. There's a, And he's being investigated for prop bets. And all Michael Porter has to do is tell his brother, the prop bet to me tonight is 20 points, five rebounds, five assists, 30 total. There's no way I'm going to get that. They're saying he was betting $2 million a month. And a lot of it's prop bets. And there were prop bets on him. So we never thought there'd be apps. There was no, we never thought there'd be phones like that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Never. I could make a wager on like anything this? today. I could bet on no, any no. five players that Any all guy. Yeah. Any, the prop bets are going to be discouraged. Because in the NBA, you can have, I if, if I was that way and I'm not, I would never bet. On me or gets me. I, I want to win on my yeah, own. Yeah, I want to win. Same. I could give two shits about mm-hmm. ten, about a hundred bucks on a game. I want to win. Sure. But winning secondary with some of these guys now. The NBA. I'm guaranteeing you half the league's betting somehow. Telling a family member, man, this is our four, third game in four nights. I'm exhausted. Wait, you're talking to like maybe one of the top players in the league. And he's telling his brother. His brother's running, getting on the app. And why didn't the why didn't the interpreter have his own app? Why is it Otani's app? Because he's a gambler. Because he's a gambler. Now, do you I do remember, you think on baseball is where you're kind of concluding? I believe. I believe. Okay. First of all, I watched a wagering show this morning on Vison. They didn't even talk about it because DraftKings is their sponsor. Yeah. So they're. So you, Gambling companies hate what's going on right now. It's his account. So it doesn't matter what happened. You're not supposed to. And if he did bet on baseball, they'll find out. He's known this guy since 2013. Yeah. He might have bet on baseball in Japan. So so these guys were buddy-buddy in the dugout on Saturday. The next thing you know, Otani sends a wire transfer, and it's titled loan. So you got to pay me back, but I'll pay you. From my account. Well, why doesn't the interpreter have his own account? And who carries somebody? I know nobody that would carry somebody for four point five million. I can introduce you to the there that would never happen. You're talking that, like a line of credit? They give you a line of credit, but they're not yeah. gonna let look, look, you think that four million was made like it happened in like a week? They've been carrying this guy for a long, yes. long time time and he's been saying i'll get you the money i'll get you the money and then he went to otani I'm, folks folks i've had to ask my wife for money it's no it's no picnic i got over my skis this week B. can you go to the bank it's no fun i was gonna buy a purse now look you know can you turn into coin collection it's not pretty so this guy had to go up to otani go i need 4.5 million all of a sudden, it's leaking out and everything else. Illegal bookies. Bad. It's bad, and they're trying to put a – because there's so much money in wagering. And for me, too. But I was against nil. I mean, I lose – I mean, I see where the LSU has a woman player that from DePaul that transferred to LSU for like 500 grand. You know how much DePaul had for her if she stayed? 20. I got that on good authority. So everything screwed up since COVID. Now you got baseball in bed with sports books built onto their stadium yep. next to the hot dog stand. Yep. And they don't think this is going to happen. And it's their biggest star and he can't speak English. And to put it in the words of a man that I met in Windsor, Ontario, ladies and gentlemen, me and my buddy, I was doing a, the Grand Rapids versus the Chicago Rush game. And I got there a day early, back in the day. And my buddy Knuckles says, let's go to Windsor. So we were in Grand Rapids. We go to Windsor, and there's this Japanese guy smoking one cigarette after another. I go, hey, what's your name? He told us his name. I go, you're the human, you're a human chimney, man. You got smoke come. 
He goes, two things we learn in, J in Japan. I go, what? He goes, smoking and gambling. Okay? Huge. I'm just telling you, Asia. that ain't the first Huge. time Otani ever heard of a baseball bat. No. You can't be that stupid. And, well, and now I'm hearing all the people prepping them up going, boy, I wish he would have answered the questions. Why? So you could kiss his ass? So you could yeah. try to cover for him? He didn't answer anything. Okay? He didn't even take questions, like, at all. No, he, he And it was, like, known before it started. If you don't know how to speak another language, the best thing you could do is the Jackie Gleason method, which he basically did, because they couldn't understand. I mean, humana, 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 humana. You know yeah. what I mean? That's basically. So they're in a bad way over there. Uh, they'll probably pay the guy off. But how come he hasn't been charged yet? How come he's not in jail? Yeah. How, I mean, how come Major League Baseball said we'll self-investigate? Okay, and the FBI is going to probably stay out of it. Maybe, maybe not, because you got more than one guy involved. But this is ugly here. It's ugly. Oh, it's ugly. I'm. Does sorry. it bother you if it's not baseball, Mike? Like if he's betting on whatever league they watch in J Japan? Only one or if reason he's... I think it's baseball. Why did he change his story? The story's what? changed like three times. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Just pay the guy off. Here's what I would do. But Manfred's a dummy. Manfred's the guy Manfred that started all this. Oh, is he an idiot? He's probably the worst GM in sports. And Gary Bettman exists, and so does Roger. Yeah, I mean, Jerry Jerry Weintorf was not his. He wanted another guy before Manfred. And Manfred basically encouraged this. What he should have done, seriously, is 2017 Astros should have kicked a couple guys out of the game. That would have never happened again. It now, would have never happened again, and it's been done before. So why them and not you know? You look at the yeah. seventeen White Sox. Like, why did all those guys yeah. get banned? Pete why Rose, Pete Rose you, banned? Gave, you gave immunity to the criminals. That's what happens now yep. in a lot of walks of life. You gave immunity to Bregman. You gave immunity to Altuve because more teams were doing it than just them. Yep, that's why exactly. So he gave them immunity because they said. I bet you more people are learning from this show today than all the other shows combined. What do you think, Eld? I, I mean, I think we're hot. Yeah, no, we're doing good. We're doing really good right now. He gave immunity to our gen, uh, to arch criminals. They, they, they fixed the baseball games. If he throws them out, you never have this problem again. All of a sudden now, people are going, well, wait, Mike, there's no, there's more. Oh, I got always more. I used to have to do four hours. The Temple basketball team three weeks ago. Temple. Rumors. High stakes gamblers. Bookmakers. Six players possibly on the Temple team. Bet stop at certain casinos. Apps. Take them off the board. Four days later, they're back playing. They're back playing. There's no way. That if that happened 10 years ago, that they're playing four days later. Yeah, no shot. And, and we haven't heard that. Oh, we're going to investigate it. This is what's going to start happening. Now you have the Otani thing. They're going to try to bury this. I can promise you this. As a guy who, who knows how to shout quietly, it's never going to leave. This Otani is, is a stain that Tide can't get out right now. Because they never had a decent story. Now, what I would do if I was the commissioner. And I hope they listen, but nobody ever listens to me. Doesn't matter. We do, I, Mike. I get hurt. I, get, I, I, you know, I'm sensitive. But I would suspend Otani for one month for being ignorant. One month, you're suspended. Nowhere are you allowed to go near a baseball game. You will no longer have an app. I don't care what for. That's part of the deal. You unknowingly got duped in a way because you don't speak the language well. That's what they'll say. We know he gambled. Well, but you're sitting out a month. Then it's over. He did a punishment. But if they let this guy keep playing, it's going to keep getting worse. Yep. You're right. Yep. I mean, the way people are, I, I know the internet's not the end all be all, but they're all over this guy. Oh, I mean, he, he went from the sweetheart, cute, cuddly Otani's eating Funyuns on the plane like a stoner. And now he's... You know, you the know face what the of best gambling part Twitter. Is? You, 
Aldo often says to me, you know, you you really hit certain things that not other people don't. Well, no, he doesn't really say that to me, but I wish he would sometimes. But I don't get any credit from him usually. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Here he comes. Aldo loves, Aldo loves that bit. Aldo's dipping in to defend himself. Aldo, Aldo loves that bit. Let I me tell you. Let me tell you guys, this has been the most entertaining hour of sports talk I've heard in a long, long time. You guys are doing a great job. Thanks, I'm just sitting Thank here you. enjoying it. Uh, well, keep I'm it going, glad guys. Somebody is you. because you know <laughs> you're the best. I love Aldo. Yeah, Aldo's Aldo incredible. And I, I've known Aldo now. I mean, forget about it. You know, I'm tied in with yeah. the family now. Doodles welcomes me and his dog and the whole thing. But, but gambling on on baseball, um, which I'll be doing today. It's hard for me because I love gambling, but if I see what happened to Pete Rose, and Pete Rose knows that Otani gambled. He knows. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He knows. And I mean, I saw, the, I saw the, the whole thing. I didn't have an interpreter like him. Yeah. Yeah. I was just a you know a college kid from the United States. So give him oh, a yeah. give him a month off. Give him a month off. You're you're suspended. Show some balls, man, Fred. Yep. Show some because every sport now. Is 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 involved in something that has nothing to do with winning. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, my God, you just see everything going to hell. I mean, you cannot let this guy, and he's going to bat today. How come the one kid, Deshante Jordan, okay, is sitting in the NBA because he's under investigation, but Otani's batting second today. You're just a week away, a week ago. From from giving a guy four and a half million on a gambling debt and lying three different times. And you're gonna dig in today? And he's off to a bad start because now he doesn't know. I just killed myself basically with my image. Yeah, and I don't think the Dodgers, the I think the Dodgers can't win any kind of championship unless the LA teams, the Lakers won a bubble championship, and 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 uh so did the Dodgers. They can't win a full scale, and now with this distraction. You know, you're in the look. If we had a guy that owned a bookie 4.5 million on a softball team, on a basketball team, we'd all be looking at him like, what the, you know, even if it was for, for our, let's say our group, the blue collar guys that played park ball. Hey, did you hear about Jimmy? What? He owes the book 15,000. Huh? It, it starts getting around. 4.5 million bucks. They don't carry interpreters making 300 grand that long. They don't. No, that I will promise you, that don't happen. No, he's probably making like eighty grand, right? And then Otani. They said, I, they, well, now all you know what I know now. Now the new angle is not only to try to not to talk about it, but well, you know, he's more than an interpreter. He writes the checks. He drives the car. He takes a shit for the guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> he ties his shoes. He skips. To the to the drive in to get him a burger. Yeah. I mean, he does thirty eight things now. Yeah. Before you know what he's getting. He just tipped walked by out Otani. to the mound and said, "Tell the guy what's going on." Yeah. He's getting tipped you know? by Otani too. Before. Oh Bobby no, I'm gonna have like, a, no. a Otani parlay up later. I'm gonna have. Oh a yeah. Otani what are we parlay. thinking? What are we thinking? Well, I, I'll tell you. I got a couple over unders for everybody for the season. I'm gonna take Pittsburgh over seventy six. Okay, because Pittsburgh in my lifetime. Since the 70s, nine, since the, we are family. If you spell pirates backwards, it's loser. Okay. But, but I'm going to take them. I'll tell you another team. I'm trying to figure out the Angels won 73 games last year. This year, the over under 71. Okay. Trout's back, but they lost Otani, who was a pitcher and their best hitter. Yeah. How are they only two less? I'm taking the under. Those are my two. Pirates. I'm going to take the over 76. I'm taking the under. If you can get it at 72, 73, the angel. And they got Ron Washington. I mean, that guy, if you've ever read about him, the only, not only were the players on drugs, Hamilton and he was. I mean, he doing coke, you know. I mean, everything. So he's going to be in Southern California getting another chance. I hope he doesn't blow it. Because some people, you got to make that first chance count. If he get another chance, 
but he doesn't have a very good team out there. Rendon has gone south. Yeah, he's you been know, terrible since going. He's to been horrible. Yeah. He's been as bad as Baez. And Trout he's is been... on a decline too. Unfortunately, oh my god! If I hear one more person, oh, he's the best player in baseball. No, he's not. He was no. for a long time. Yeah, but he played in relative obscurity. I never see. I'm, I'm an older man. I'm a senior. I'm a shut in. I, I can't stay up past nine. I used to go out at night. I can't stay up past night. So I see very little West Coast baseball. So did everybody else. And you never saw them in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Why am I to think that they're going to win more than 71, 72 games without Otani? And Trout's due for a couple of uh, stints on the disabled list. For sure. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, automatic. He'll oh. miss that list. He'll miss at least 30, right. 40 games. Oh, my God. A week here, a week there. Yeah. yeah it's automatic. It's yeah. automatic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you talked about the Cubs and White Sox over unders. The Cubs were eighty four and a half, and the White Sox were at 60. Cubs were eighty four and a half. The White Sox are sixty one. Uh, Do you like the over on both, or are you taking under I sixty like for the White Sox? We were two and zero last year. I took Texas over, and I took the Cubs over. BB took the Cubs over. My wife, she takes uh -huh. one. Well, she always takes the Cubs, so she takes. She's going to take the over, and it should be over. But I, you know, eighty four and a half. You're supposed to be winning the division. Yeah. You know, but then I look, St. Louis is 85. They're all like bunched. So it's a crapshoot. The White Sox, I like, uh, I wouldn't bet the White Sox, you know? Because if it I was mean, 60 the on thing, the dot, I wouldn't be surprised. If yeah, they went 60 you know, they, and 100, 60 and 102, would not be shocked my, at all. I got 200 on Otani under 39 and a half home runs. Well, that's another thing. He could be suspended. That's it. They could find out something. And that 39 is gold. Yep. People are gonna jump go 39's nothing. Oh, wait a minute now. You just heard you just heard Mike say they if they want to put this away, that's all I'm saying, Vinny. I agree. You gotta suspend them. If you don't, we'll be talking about this in July. Hey, well, there'll be people with Otani parlays. I'm gonna have some fun with it. 100 you know. percent He bats after a guy whose last name is Betts. Yes. When they're both, when the game's about to start and Mookie's about to lead off, and Otani's standing there in the on deck circle, it says Otani bets. <laughs> Everyone's like, one more know. thing, <laughs> one more, one more thing before um, we get on to other things. You know what I keep hearing? Oh, he's so private. Why he's so private? Yeah, but see, here's what I think happened. Being the street guy that I am. And I think maybe other street people out there, which most of us were in Chicago will, or in the suburbs, will be saying. He's so private. Yet two weeks ago, I saw I turned on the TV and there's flashbulbs hitting him. And he's introducing his wife. Wait a minute. We shouldn't even know if he's married or not. We shouldn't even see her. All of a sudden, they parade her up with the Dodger logo in the back. Because I think at the time they said, Otani's down about three and a half. We got to change something up here, you know? So they bring her on, right? So the first game, I'm watching, this is how sick I am. I bet the first game under nine in Korea, okay? By the way, I'm all for cheerleaders in baseball, period, okay? The problem with us is we're so woke, they have purple hair and weigh 300 pounds. That's the problem, okay? I mean, did you see the cheerleaders? Wait a minute. Did you see the cheerleaders in yeah, Korea? I did. I did. Oh my God. Anyway. Uh, that the 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 I lost my train. What were we talking about on the cheerleaders? Yeah, you had to bring up woke cheerleaders, and of course you throw yourselves off. You were talking I, about I got, you, no, you, had, no, no. you had the over or you had the under nine in Korea. Oh, That's in Korea. Yeah. Had the under nine in Korea. Then the cheerleaders came out. Uh the final score was under. So the next, and they showed his wife. As much as they showed Taylor Swift the first time she was on the Chiefs game, they must have shown Mrs. Otani, who she probably just met three weeks ago, um, 35 times. Okay. I'm going, my God. Okay. Enough. You know, and they kept showing her. The next day when it all came out, you know how many times they showed her? Zero. <laughs> Couldn't find her. Couldn't find her. She was at the Catskills or something in a comedy show. You couldn't find the woman. They got her out of there. So that whole thing stinks. Yeah, it does. And yep. 
we'll see I how enjoyed. it gets resolved. Mike, um, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show today. It's been one of the best like, hours I've ever every had. Every week, every like for a couple minutes, you like, know, say, Mike, hey, how you doing? And then walk. I I would love that. You could come in, insult me, make fun of Italians for five minutes. I don't. Minutes, I'm half know. Italian. I don't make fun of Italians. Are you kidding me? I had the man. I had every group after me in the day. The Italian group came after me. Of course, they came after uh, a few people. They came after the Sopranos back in the day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Don't have a picket sign. I don't mean, have a picket sign you for say, the Sopranos. You say uh, you're half Italian. That means you don't make fun of Ita- since when? In the history of the world, does being partially Italian make you not make fun of Italians? I well, no, my Italians. deal is, my deal is, and this, I read this on the air, an Italian inventor, my grandfather fought for both sides in World War One. Hey, we're losing. We're losing. Yeah, let's go over to that side. Okay. And they got new uniforms and they, all right. And then they were shooting at their buddies. Okay. You know the history. This Italian inventor invented a plane. That not only flies forward, but could be put in stall and had a propeller in the back and could retreat. They got mad about that. How why, why are you getting mad? The, the guy invented it. You know, yeah. I just read it off a piece of paper. How dare you? I'll give you another one. Here's when they really got well, they went after I think it was Rosenblum because he said something like when he was coach in Kentucky that it looked he looked like Michael Corleone on the sidelines. They came after him. Oh my God, did they come after him? And then another one I did. Oh, this you'll you'll love this. Because I used to talk about all ethnicities. We nobody talks about anymore about that stuff. They're all afraid. I'm not yeah. You know, I don't care. Uh I said the worst thing that could happen to Italians Okay, because my grandfather was a tough guy, but they put him in a uniform and he was helpless. Okay, they couldn't shoot straight. You put him in the Italian tea, you put him in some baggy grays, you put a street corner light in. Nobody's taking it over. Nobody. They fight to the death for the street corner. They just had trouble with land. What can I tell you? Very funny, Mike. That's good stuff. That's yeah. good stuff. You know the history. Oh, of course I do. I go, I go to my grandfather we're eating spaghetti. I go, how was the war? He goes, well, at first it wasn't good. But after that, when we went to the other side, we did well. He's eating his <laughs> Just like keep, keep eating his pasta. Yeah. Love that, Mike. Yeah. Love that, Mike. Well, today was a great show. Barroom Network's lucky to have you. Thank we're you very buddy. thrilled that you, you came too. on the show today. It was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed this. As Aldo said, it's been one of the better times we've had on this show. And, you know, I'm you know, and me, me and me and Joe Mando do great work. You I know Joe, Joe Mando well. He's well. When I told Joe my girlfriend goes, today. Joe calls me. goes, anybody died today? <laughs> well, that's I was going to say. Wait, I told, I wait, told wait, my wait, girlfriend wait, I'm wait, on with Mike knows Mike. Somebody big just died. I mean, John Suntra <laughs> says it's a genius show. It but, is. It but is. he says that you thought this up and actually the guts to do it. I go, what's so hard about that? So we've had some great shows. Tommy Williams died. Okay. He was at the score for 10 years. Mm-hmm. We're not going to do it. Somebody big just died. Yeah. Jimmy Carter. I'll get there in a minute. <laughs> I'm staying an extra second or two. That's funny. Tommy Williams. I used to see him all the time. Relig- most religious guy did the announcing, uh, worked for uh, PBS and in, in Gary. Uh, did the Gary Steele uh, game, uh, baseball games, was the public address announcer. He used to go, how you doing, partner? I go, how you doing, Tommy? God bless you, Mike. How you doing? I go, I'm not doing too good. I'm a little hungover. Oh, that's okay, partner. You'll be all right by the time the big red light comes on. Just one of the greatest guys. Just such a, he was a host, like I said earlier, a producer, writer. And then Joe Lieberman died. The only guy that has a half, half a sense in, 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 in the former senator died. So. And I had to turn to uh, turn give that thumbs down too, you know. But I wanted to just put them into this bar uh, bar room po- uh, this bar room podcast. Absolutely, R.I.P. Yeah. He will be missed. I did yeah. tell my girlfriend I was coming on with Mike North today, and she you goes, like me? Uh, yeah, of course. But she goes, <laughs> "Oh, who died?" I'm like, "No, no, 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 no. I'm not filling in for Joe today. That's Joe Man. Joe called we're me. talking baseball. <laughs> Joe Joe called me one day. He goes, "Hey." John, some I think Bob Walters died. I go, who who the hell's he? He he was in Star Wars. <laughs> I I threw him a bone. 
and we had a show the next time out, and he couldn't even remember his name, Joe. He's oh, hilarious. Man, that's Joe funny. goes, hey, the next time somebody croaks, tune in. It's the best. We have fun. Lo- love that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he helps me with this show tremendously, and it's good stuff. Uh, I'm, got- I'm worried about Iowa State. I'm worried. Illinois getting points, I think. Iowa State under the radar. Be careful. So you're taking Illinois then? Well, I'm not betting it probably because uh, I, I think there's better bets out there. Who's playing North Carolina? Alabama? Uh, I believe it is Alabama. I can fact check that for you really quick. I'll take Alabama tonight. That's the one I'll give out, and I gave out the over-unders. I know, you know. Yeah, you got 23-11 and 11 Alabama against 29-7 and 7 North Carolina. Yeah, and North Carolina. Listen to this. Hubert Davis. I know. How do I do it? Hubert Davis is eight and Hubert Davis is eight and zero against the spread since he became a coach in the tournament. Pretty good. So be careful. He's the new North Carolina coach. Very very good. Shout out Rabbit Gaming. Um, Rabbit Gaming. I'm exhausted, baby. I'm going to take a nap later after a sandwich and watch a little bit of baseball. Absolutely. That's what we're all going to do today. I think, Mike. I think we're going to yeah. we're going to have hot dogs from Rand's Red Hot. I, I can't go to yes, BB's. Rand Red Hot. Can't go to BB's, unfortunately. No, BB's been closed, but the <laughs> legend uh, lives on. I'll uh, pretend that's what I mean. No, wait. Does Rand hot dogs have mustard relish? Yep. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. They do. Tomato. Right. I think they dynamite do. Couple right. sticks. Yep. Got some celery sauce. Got the yep. poppy seed bun. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are they skinless? They steam or they put them in water? Um, that I don't know. That I'm not that's sure. Okay. I'll find out. You I'll, know what I'll... you do, though? I got a little tip for everybody that goes get hot dogs. Sometimes when hot dog stands are open late at night, well, the hot dogs have lost their coloring, okay? But they'll leave them in there and use them the next day. So what you do if you come in early, you go, give me a plain hot dog, okay? Because then they won't give you the one that's discolored, that's yeah. lost the red dye. So you get the good hot dog, and they go, you know what? I decide I want everything on it. <laughs> <laughs> Just a friendly tip for everybody. There you go. There you we go. never uh, did that crap. We well, no. I, BB's did it the right way. How, how oh, that's year, why we're year, not, baby. What year Come did on. it close? What year did it close? Oh, Christ. We were open there eight years, around 1999, 2000. I don't know okay. when it closed. but uh, No, it closed in 92. 93, they said, listen, don't sell the hot dog stand. That sports station you thought of, it's not <laughs> going to make it. I go, I'll keep it a year. Usually you, and and you know what? I knew then. I said, "You let's sell. You know, let's get out." Yeah. So it worked out. But they it were, did work out. The same people that predicted the Sox rebuild that are still there were saying we weren't going to make it six months. I know yep. who they are. One hundred percent. No, no, no. I don't forget. No, you don't forget. You know, I that's the number forget. one thing people bring up to me. The like, oh, I do a show with Mike North every so often. You know, from the score. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had a hot dog from him in the eighties. They don't bring. I'm like, really? The guy's a radio legend. You're bringing up the hot dog from the eighties. I had a guy call me. I had a guy uh, get a hold of me the other day. I met you and Jiggets in 1994, <laughs> and it was at Hooters. Remember? And I go, yeah, but yeah, don't you don't, you don't remember. You don't. Remember. What a fun time it was. Absolutely, absolutely. Make sure you catch all Mike North stuff. Follow him at North to North on Twitter, and you can follow me if you care yeah. at Vinny Parisi on Here's Twitter what I too. Hope we see today, the third base coach. Yep, yep. For the other team, probably more than likely. I'll but be my. Quit it, and I'll I'm be, the negative one. Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm fully, not, I'm fully negative now. Well, yeah, because you had your heart taken out. Yeah, hundred percent. No, here's I'm, what the I'm Sox done. do. They took your heart out, and well, yep, yep. That's good, Vinny. Here, take Mankata, it Mankata took out my heart. He put it on yeah, the floor. You know what? He, he didn't put it doing in his some... body. He didn't put it in his own body because he don't have no art. No, no. He started doing some dancing on it. He was singing uh, Desastre Persona while dancing on top of my heart. Amigo! I, I love the song. I do get down with some salsa every now and then, well, but yeah, not from the greatest, him. greatest, and Eldo's going to like this. <laughs> you know, Ricky Martin. Okay? Living La Vida Loca? <laughs> I love that song. Living La Vida Loca. His skin is the color of... Well, it's not mocha, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, my God. Remember That's those funny. days? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh Mike, that All was right, very guys. fun. Thank you for everything to everybody. Right, Tune in to the rest of the Barroom Network. I'll catch you guys on South Burbs Hitman on Monday night. And as always, thank you for listening. Tommy. Man, that hurts. Ooh. Ooh. Nicest guy in. Thank you.